Hello, and welcome back to Phaser Tech. So today I'm finally going to talk about some real engineering and introduce one of my projects that I started working on over a year ago. Right here is my custom designed autonomous robot that I built around NVIDIA's Jetson Nano embedded computer. The Jetson Nano is similar to a Raspberry Pi, but it also features a low power GPU from NVIDIA that can take advantage of the CUDA toolkit for AI applications and neural network libraries. This allows for advanced capabilities such as object tracking and speech recognition. The robot is powered by three 18650 lithium ion batteries, giving a battery life of several hours. Hey Jetson, start playing a random song. Playing a random song now. Some other hardware I included are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, a directional microphone array, speakers, 360 degree LiDAR for navigation, and several more sensors. Designing and building this involved a few different skill sets including CAD design, Python programming, electrical design and soldering, and more. But first, I wanted to elaborate a bit on what I mean by real engineering. I've noticed the term engineer gets thrown around a lot these days. And I know this might trigger some people, but I think it's important to make the distinction of what real engineering is. For example, an app developer is not an engineer, although some of them might think of themselves as software engineers. But app developers calling themselves software engineers is actually pretty harmless compared to some of the other examples I could talk about. But I'll just leave it at that and move on. So allow me to give a few definitions of engineering first before I go deeper with some examples. Simply put, engineering means leveraging physics and mathematical models to design things. It involves the high level design of a system and understanding how all its various components interact with each other and creating a mathematical model that controls these components based on some inputs. Engineering means taking a customer specifications and creating something from scratch that actually achieves what it was designed to do by taking the working model you developed and turning that system into a reality. Now this system can be physical or mechanical in nature, or it can be electrical or chemical or biological or whatever it may be. When it comes to designing robots, this requires the combination and overlap of mechanical, electrical, and software engineering all into one cohesive package. But the key part I want to emphasize in the distinction of what qualifies as real engineering is that the system being designed needs to be governed by a mathematical model, a model based on scientific principles. Students who are serious about engineering will eventually come across a topic called control theory. One of the dominant techniques in control theory are feedback control systems, and they've been used for at least a century now in a variety of applications ranging from mechanical systems to circuits to chemical processes and more. A PID controller, also known as PID controller, or Proportional Integral Derivative Controller, is a classic example of a controller using a feedback loop and is the most popular type used because of its robustness and relative ease to implement. Originally, they were created using analog circuits, but today they're coded in software. I designed two PID controllers to make my robot perform its tracking abilities, and more specifically, they're controlling its motors and servos. The camera gimbal contains two servos which controls the camera's X and Y coordinates. To give a short explanation of how it works, it first runs the Jetson inference library to detect if there's a person or object in view. Then the XY coordinates of that person or object are extracted and fed as inputs into the first controller, which then determines how to move the camera gimbal to keep the person in view. 
The other PID controller handles the wheel motors, and it's more complicated than the first. But basically, the input parameters include the angle that the camera is currently pointed, and sensor data from the IMU, which also contains a gyroscope for rotational data. It takes into consideration the acceleration and velocity of the robot to give smooth and accurate control over the movements. Now let's talk a bit about how I constructed the robot. The entire body was custom designed in CAD software, specifically Fusion 360, and all the parts were made using my 3D printer. The wheels were taken from LEGO sets, but eventually I want to create my own wheels using a more rubber-like material such as TPU. I loaded it with plenty of hardware to make it fully autonomous and will be capable of even more impressive things than it can do now. For example, imagine if I told it to go around the backyard to the other side of the house and check if a cat is there. It should be able to navigate there on its own without crashing into anything, check if there's a cat, and return back to verbally tell me if it found a cat or not. The footage you're looking at now shows my robot being manually controlled using an Xbox controller, so it's not completely autonomous yet, but what I just described could certainly be possible after further development on the software. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you can probably imagine how this project could potentially turn into something similar to a real-life droid. Maybe sort of like R2-D2, but with C-3PO's voice. Tracking you now. Person found. However, successfully completing all this coding will take a lot of time. So far I've been doing it all in Python, but eventually I want to convert everything into C++. Originally I thought this would be the perfect topic for a video series and tutorials going over how I did each feature and the code. For example, the first video would be a guide on how to get the Jetson inference library working so that objects and people can be detected in the video stream. Then the next video in the series would expand on that and talk about how to extract the XY coordinates of the detected person or object, and use these coordinates to control the camera gimbal servos, and so on. And after talking about all the things I've already done, I plan to continue the video series with updates as I complete new features. But unfortunately, the supply chain issues have hit embedded devices much harder than anything else. And right now, it's practically impossible to find any Raspberry Pis or Judson Nanos for a reasonable price. The Jetson Nano MSRP was originally only 100 bucks and was even cheaper for the 2 gig version. However, it's impossible to find them in stock anymore and you'd be lucky to find a used one for 400 bucks now. So I don't see the point in dedicating a lot of time into a video series on a board that nobody can purchase right now. But even so, I'll probably make a few videos going over concepts that aren't exclusive to the Jetson board. For example, PID controllers are the sort of topic you'd find in an upper division or grad level engineering course. So that should be helpful for anyone learning controls regardless of the platform they're using. Now before I end this video, I wanted to mention another part of the project that would truly take the engineering aspect to the next level. The advanced calculus and differential equations required to do these sort of control problems can be mathematically transformed into matrices. These matrices can be multiplied with each other or have other matrix operations done to them to compute the desired outputs. This is how computers efficiently solve these sort of problems, and it turns out that's exactly what CUDA and GPU computing was optimized for, to perform fast matrix operations and calculations. Now the Jetson Nano board is fast for its size, but it still pales in comparison to the computation power of a desktop computer. So eventually I want to use the Wi-Fi to stream the robot's camera and sensor data to my desktop, then use its GPU to do the heavy calculations that would be too difficult for the Jetson board, and send the results back to it. That would open the door for my robot to perform even more advanced operations. I actually sort of got started on this idea already, and was able to stream all the robot's sensor and camera data to my computer over Wi-Fi. My desktop ran a custom Python app to display all the data. 
but that's all I've managed to do so far. But anyway, that's all I wanted to share for today. I think I can bring some very unique and educational content that you wouldn't be able to find on other channels, and I'm excited to continue sharing more of my projects with you all. But I also wanted to continue doing some more general guides and reviews and those sort of tech-related things as well, and not always focus on advanced topics such as this one. Hopefully my channel can offer something for everyone, so please bear with me if it takes me a month or two to return to this topic. Also, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave a comment. And also, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching, and supporting what I'm doing, and I'll see you all next time.